Today we're going to prove this property with uh, the product of multiplicative inverses. And it's uh, stating that a times b inverse is equal to a inverse b inverse if a and b are not equal to zero. Now this problem comes from Michael Fivak's calculus, chapter one, problem number three, part three. And what he tells us to do is remember a defining property of a times b inverse. So in order to do this, we need to determine what it means uh, for something to be an inverse. Um, we have this property where a and b are not equal to zero. So since a and b are not equal to zero, then they have multiplicative inverses. This means that a times its inverse is equal to one and b times its inverse is equal to one. And since both of these numbers are not equal to zero, then their product is not gonna be zero. So also, a times b will not equal zero. So that means that it has a multiplicative inverse. So then a times b times a times b inverse is equal to one. And this is the property Spivak was wanting us to understand. So we're gonna somehow get from this equation um, to this equation right here. And in order to do this, we're gonna implore uh, a trick that we did in a previous video. So we know that one is equal to this right here, a times its inverse. But this is also equal to a times its inverse times one. But we also know that one is equal to b times its inverse. So we have one is equal to a times its inverse times b times its inverse. And so simplifying this, this string of equations, we see that one is equal to a in times its inverse, and then B times its inverse. Now, what we can do since uh, the real numbers are commutative and associative, we can commute A and B and associate them. So one is equal to A times B, and then we'll do the same thing with the inverses, times A inverse times B inverse. Now, what we can do is multiply both sides of this equation by the multiplicative inverse of a times b. So we have a times b inverse times one is equal to a times b inverse times a times b times a inverse times b inverse. Now, this product right here is just going to be a times b inverse. But right here, we established this at the very beginning of the proof. a times b uh, inverse times a times b is equal to 1. So we have this is equal to 1 times a inverse b inverse. And if you notice, we're essentially done with the proof because we have a times b inverse is equal to a inverse times b inverse. 